People get like really scared of flying, but it's the safest mode of transport. You put all the bits in a row, basically, in the format that you're expecting. And then, ta-da, image of three random American Italians. Because if you get a decent job that you like in a nine to five, life's not that difficult. Corporate life is great. What's a concept in engineering that will destroy little layman's mind? Electromagnetism. It is a little bit like dark wizardry. Waves go through the air and we have pretty much mastered the art of sticking a giant metal pole in the air to receive them and do stuff with them. We can now transmit very complex information over the globe by sticking a giant metal rod in the air. So let's say I wanted to send a video of the Rizzler to my friends. What is the science behind that? You'd have your image like whatever image format you use. Eventually it's broken down into bits and bytes. You then transfer that zero and one in whichever way you want to. If you're going over an antenna, you might use some modulation, whether that's AM or FM. It goes into the antenna, the electromagnetic wave is produced. Whatever frequency you're transmitting at is received by the other antenna. You then have to demodulate what you get. If you've chosen AM, you might do what's known as like enveloping. You basically check how big the signal is and that tells you whether or not it's a zero or one or whatever. That gives you your zero and one strings. You put all the bits in a row, basically, in the format that you're expecting. And then, ta-da, image of three random American Italians in Costco. Well, what do engineers actually do? Wizardry, magic. We go into a cupboard and we chant ancient magic, such as pressing the simulate button on a computer. I think people think engineering is scary because it's like a, a lot of it is a lot of maths. Nowadays, people are more scared of maths than they used to be. Engineering is difficult. It's not this crazy magic thing where we all walk into the cupboard with a wizard hat on and just... You. But that's what you said. I was joking. I don't own a wizard hat. I would like a wizard hat. I think that'd look really cool. What's it like working corporate life? The people that you see online that will like escape the matrix, they've never actually worked a nine to five. Because if you get a decent job that you like in a nine to five, life's not that difficult. Like, you have stressful points in your job, yeah, that's fine. But, like, you get stuff like time off. They're always like, oh, escape the matrix, escape the matrix. And then you look at their life and it's like, they're either broke, lying about how wealthy they are on the internet. They're never as rich as they say they are. Why would they sell you a course in how to make yourself rich? They just do the thing themselves. Corporate life is great. You work a reasonable portion of the day. As long as you're doing work that, like, you find somewhat interesting. Because nobody works a full eight hours a day anyway. Like, you go to the office and you'll do stuff here and there. Like, you'll talk to people in the office or you'll, you'll get up and go make yourself a drink. And it's like... A little bit of small talk and... Yeah, there. like, you don't, you don't work eight, like a full eight hours, really. People get, like, really scared of flying. And I completely get it because it's incredibly scary. But it's the safest mode of transport per, like, a thousand people travelled or something like that. Why is that? Because, like, so much effort gets spent into the engineering behind them that they are arguably, and unless you willingly ignore safety issues, they are practically the safest thing that you can get on. We got to a point where you could stick someone in a metal tube, basically run it up to as fast as it can get, stick some basically blades on the side, and we've got back to the point where it's arguably one of the safest forms of transport you can take. Because you get like one or two plane crashes a year, really. Some years you don't get any, like major airline crashes. Like smaller airplanes, they're, they're a lot more dangerous but big like passenger airplanes. A lot of these planes might fly with like half a wing missing or like half, like an engine gone. A lot of like, a lot of very big airplanes can fly with practically just one or two engines left. Same for like military aircraft. There's, a couple of, there's like some military aircraft that like you can basically take a wing and a half off and they'll be able to glide. Big aeroplanes are some of the safest things you can get on, contrasted with like motorcycles and stuff like that. One tip you would give yourself in first year? Go out more. For the first like, term, I didn't really go out much. So I didn't go to uni with anyone I knew. I couldn't drink at the start of uni. But if I, I think if I'd have gone out more, because it, it took me until like the second term of uni to kind of get like uni really rolling. Yeah. And then once I'd got it rolling, it was like, oh, this is easy now. Because all you've got to do is meet a couple of people, make a decent first impression on them. And then you might not talk to them again for like three or four weeks. You'll both end up in the club at the same time. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I, I vaguely know you. You'll meet their friends. And then you hang out with them long enough and then you start doing the same. You walk through campus and you see someone you know and you see someone you know and you see someone you know and it's like... <laughs> and then you go out and you see people you know when you're out and get invited to things and like, oh, do you want to do this next week? I've got a spare ticket for this. And you end up just doing random things. Well, and you meet new people and like, you meet... Maybe, maybe meet you meet someone you love, someone, somebody you like. And, well, yeah. Maybe you meet your girlfriend. Maybe meet your boyfriend, I don't know. I bet you. <sighs> you just ruined what could be a great clip. Are you able to blind rank these five white people? <laughs> Larry Bird. One. Joe Biden. Three. Whenever you do a blind ranking, people always include like someone to try and trick someone towards like four or five. And so I always feel like you've got to hedge your bets. You've still got a slot for two, and then you've still got four and five. Eminem.
Two. Quentin Tarantino. Five. The Costco guys. Oh, four. I feel like the Costco guys are like a representation of like modern society, where we've got to with influencer culture. It's three American Italian dudes slash children running around a Costco going boom or do. Yeah. Whereas like Quentin Tarantino likes feet. So I really like very niche sports because they've usually got like wacky rules that you just look at and you're like, I'm so glad someone came up with that. Yeah. Because we're all better off for it. The Finns play Pesa Paolo. It's like baseball, but they run in like a zigzag instead of like round the bases. They'll play on like a field like this, but they just won't have a fence. And so like some of their fields are like next to a river. And so they'll just hit the ball and it will like bounce out into the river. And then you just see this dude come claw, like literally steaming into the river. That's like dive in the river to get the ball out and then throw it back out. It's quite fun. <laughs> I have a point that just says white guilt. <laughs> oh.